she ends up testifying. Your thoughts on Ashley Shaw as a witness for the state? I thought she was a powerful witness. I can understand how jurors and certainly viewers would think, well, you know, she was participating, how do we trust her? And you know what I would say, I've tried multiple murder cases over the years and it's, I, I can't think of one ever where, you know, most of the witnesses weren't somewhat shady. Um, it's the nature of the environment that people end up murdered. Um, you know, the real question, I think, if somebody's questioning this woman's credibility is, you know, what what is her motivation for making all of this up? Um, it's really bizarre that someone would go out on that kind of limb. I have employees and I can't even get them to cover for me when I'm playing golf and a judge calls, you know, so the <laughs> idea, you know, the idea that somebody would do this, I certainly could see it being perplexing. Um, to the jury. But I think the question is, you know, what is her real motivation? There's nothing unusual about an immunity deal. If I was the prosecutor in this case, I would not have given her full immunity. I, I think for the jury to see and hear testimony that she was getting some consequences for attempted murder um, would have been appropriate and would have mitigated any possibility that um, her credibility was going to be called into question to the point where somebody would vote not guilty. But nothing unusual about them cutting this kind of deal. Um, and I personally think it was appropriate. I thought she was credible. All right. She might have been credible, but I want to play something now that may fly in the face of that thought. Let's listen now to Ashley Shaw on cross-examination. Reality doesn't set in, I guess. And you again, Lenley comes to you again, this person who you're not friends with, spas failing, and she asks you again to murder Ben. And you say what? Yes. You say yes again. Does that make any sense? No. Does she give you any money? No, sir. And why do you do it? <coughs> why do you agree to kill Ben again? I'm, I don't know. You don't know. Does that make sense, Ashley? That you would try again to kill a man for no re as a favor? I'm sorry, I don't know how to answer that. I don't. You don't have the answer because you never tried to kill Ben. You and Lenley never tried to kill Ben. That's the real answer, isn't it? No. All right, Jamie White, you know, when I heard that, you know, he here's my argument as a defense attorney. When you talk about what was her motivation to lie, she has a child, right? She got involved in this, or maybe she didn't get involved in it. But at the end of the day, the police basically told her, look, we've got enough information to, to suggest that you were. We have your searches. We have these words of this other guy. You're either with us or you're with them. She decides to be with the police because that's the best place to be. They give her a sweetheart deal. Even you said that. Uh, I would never have expected. She actually followed through on that attempted murder and they let her walk right. which is surprising to me and then when you talk about well why did she help her kill someone I don't know there was no monetary nothing monetary in it she's just bored in her life she decides to try to kill someone that to me is what doesn't make sense Jake it's it's very bizarre and I certainly can't make any sense of it and I think the jury's probably going to struggle with her credibility so the model jury instructions will, there will be an instruction when you're judging the credibility of a witness, they'll lay out multiple factors for the jury to um, examine. You know, everything from how did the witness appear on the stand, did they argue with the lawyers and so on. But ultimately the court will give the jury an instruction that says, if you think a witness lied, you can believe some of what they said or all of what they said, you can disregard all of it or believe all of it or take the bits and pieces you believe. And I think that ultimately is what we're dealing with here. And Michael, you just spoke to this. I mean, I don't have words for why this woman would do this. It's just extremely bizarre, it's not getting money, not involved with this gentleman. It's just an employee at a salon. But at the end of the day, if enough pieces of her testimony make sense to the jury, they can take those pieces and apply them to the law and, and convict um, the defendant. Yeah, and, and, and on the one hand, the story makes sense. They also have Michael Humphrey, which basically backs up a lot of what she talked about. So when you start adding that up and piling it up, um, then you might have, like you said, a more credible witness, correct? <laughs> I, I believe so. But I, th I think your point is a good one. I mean, you know, this is such a bizarre set of facts and circumstances. And when you throw in complete immunity for trying to kill somebody, you know, a jury very well could just decide to uh, disregard everything that she has testified to. And I think that is probably going to be the focus of defense closings argument.
Yeah, I agree. But then, you know, you still have to deal with Michael Humphrey as well. And it's hard for me to believe that they're not going to think she had something to do with it. Will they be willing to let her off? We don't know. She's going to take the stand and we'll have to hear her story. All right. Stand by, Jamie. We're going to take a quick break. When